Welcome to another episode of Bourbon and Data Breaches, where we cover five of the most interesting breaches from this last week. I'm Steve. I'm Connor. Thanks. Great. This week, we're diving into major cyber attacks, hitting everything from universities and crypto exchanges to cloud giants and your home internet router. It's been a week of chaos. Let's jump right in. Starting us off, New York University hacked. New York University's website got completely owned and sensitive data was exposed for all to see. It's giving intro to digital security failure 101. And unfortunately, no one gets extra credit for this mess. Details are still murky, but reports suggest private student and institutional information were leaked online. Yeah, I mean, as a student, imagine if you're at NYU, you know, studying a degree in cybersecurity, then you get to witness this. It almost becomes a real life example. Hopefully they can turn it into a teaching moment for those students. In all seriousness, I've been a personal victim of things of this nature. And what's unfortunate as a consumer of products like universities or telecom, where you're forced to provide, you know, things like social security numbers, person sensitive PII to become a student, to become a customer for these critical services. And then as a result, you're, you know, depending on what kind of information is compromised, you know, you could have that impact you for the rest of your life. So these things do have real impacts on individuals. And we see education being more and more of a target, shouting out to all of the students that were affected as well as the faculty and hope it's not as bad as it may sound. So someone had uh, NYU's website and turned it into a kind of protest billboard, replacing the homepage with student test scores and cryptic top secret headline. Uh, some say it was to expose racial bias in uh, results. Others say it was just plain racist. It feels like a weird crossover uh, between hacking and activism, or maybe just someone uh, with something against the admissions office. It's uncomfortable and confusing, and the university hasn't said anything yet, which somehow makes it worse. While the page is back to normal, the screenshots are everywhere now. It's a reminder that even the most prestigious institutions can get caught off guard and used to send messages they never approved. What's interesting is that universities and education in general have been less of a target for ransomware because they just don't pay out and ransomware gangs have figured out that there's a better payday in other industries. So we're seeing that trend is not impacting activists who are going after universities for reasons of their own. Unfortunate for NYU. Moving on to story number two. We've got Kinetic Router Leak, your wife ride. Kinetic routers used by thousands of households and small businesses leaked user credentials and device details in a massive data spill. Users were told to change their passwords and update firmware like yesterday. Okay. A lot of the data was in plain text, meaning no hacking tools needed, just copy and paste. It started back in 2023 and went unnoticed until now. Some routers even had super old password protections. You could like one of those stories where tech gets ahead of itself and security gets left behind. For anyone still using one of these routers, probably time for a reason and maybe to rethink cloud backups and let's store all this stuff in the first place. Yeah, it's interesting to hear low risk tied to this, right? I mean, obviously it might be, well, again, there's millions of users of these routers. I'm not sure this particular model and what the quantity is, but I mean, ultimately any device connected to your Wi-Fi, no matter what it is, could be compromised. And when I think of things like this, you know, hey, change your password, update the firmware. Great. doesn't sound that hard, but how many consumers are actually seeing the information that they need to do that, right? They may send out an email, but some people get thousands or hundreds of emails a day. There could still be hundreds of thousands or millions of these devices out there that haven't updated the firmware, haven't updated the password. Could be a nice continuous feed for some hacker out in Belarus, taking a look at some ring camera footage or who knows what. Hilarious. I can't believe you would pick on Belarus. On Belarus. It. 
What did Belarus ever do to you? Moving on to story number three. Coin Mama ransomware threat. The crypto bros are in trouble again. The crypto exchange Coin Mama just got coin wrecked by the F Society Flocker Group. They claim to have stolen two terabytes of data, including 210,000 user records and transaction histories. Wow. They've given Coin Mama seven days to pay up or the data goes public. If I can say one thing, you don't want to find yourself in the flocker. If this data goes public, there's going to be quite a few individuals who are nervous. If this is linking user data to wallet addresses, we might see some interesting payments from individuals. So this could lead to nervousness, exposure of maybe some supposedly private payments, but also serious financial loss, fraud potential. Not a good one whenever the secrecy of crypto is compromised. F Blocker. That's one of the new kids on the block, right? Is it F Blocker? Block, no. It's Flocker. Blocker. <laughs> F Blocker. You've, You've been, you've been sent warned. to the Flocker. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know much about this breach, whatever they do, but yeah, it sounds like trying to investigate at this very moment what they do. It's something related with crypto, it's something related with bank accounts. Probably not good news for the people who have their money in there. Wow, internet breached and not in a good way. Internet provider Wide Open West or WOW was hit by the Arcana ransomware group. The breach hasn't been confirmed in full, but we're talking about a company with millions of customers and over 600 million in annual revenue. So yeah, this isn't a small internet company. You can see more from the Arcana security site, which is actually a ransomware site. Uh, okay, this is one of the new kids in the blog. They probably didn't expect that to be the hacker's reaction after reaching their system. Wow. And now customers are like, wow, I love it when my personal data gets auctioned off, off on a dark web forum. All I can say is, wow. So WoW was not an ISP on my personal radar. When you think of ISPs, that's the gold mine for hackers, right? I mean, everything you need, addresses, payment information, browsing habits. Again, to Frank's point, something that customers would not be happy to see being trafficked on the dark web. So yeah, if this is confirmed, that could be a large attack to this event. Phishing attacks, theft, personal search histories being compromised and Potentially, your grandma getting emails from googleprime.biz. Moving right along to our last story, and this one is a controversial one. Allegedly, Oracle Cloud got compromised. Allegedly. As you can tell, this one is being debated. Oracle is saying that nothing happened. Oracle customers are actually saying that something did happen. Either way, Oracle's traditional cloud infrastructure got allegedly compromised in what is shaping up to be one of the biggest cloud breaches in a while. Attackers claim they stole data from 6 million users, including SSO creds, LDAP, encrypted passwords, key files, and even enterprise manager access. This is bad if it's true. And that's the debate. If this is true, uh, this one's pretty scary when you think about the potential boom, how large Oracle is reach that they have. While it's very different from a breach aspect compared to something like move it, this has that kind of boom potential along with it. But this is something where everyone's a little bit on edge waiting to see what comes from this. Fingers crossed that it's just an alleged breach when these large cloud giants have these attacks, reuse credentials, internal tools, internal systems are connected for thousands of organizations, this boom could be very massive. And it's something that I will personally be keeping an eye on to see how that spreads. And if this is just an alleged allegation or a confirmed event. Is this true? I think it was confirmed yesterday. They were going around saying you know, whether it was true or not. This was strange. Hackers say they broke into an Oracle cloud and stole data from more than 140,000 customers. Things like logging credentials, encrypted files, all sorts of 
stuff then came out and said that didn't happen, but then the hacker posted proof code part of the data and even uploaded something to Oracle's own server. So did it happen? Nobody's really sure. What we do know is that this could affect a lot of companies and the hacker apparently wants over 200 million to make it go away. Um, even if it's exaggerated, it's enough to make someone who uses the cloud pause and wonder what's really going on behind those logins. Yeah, 200 million is a lot, but if this is legit and they do have access that they claim they have, the damages could be, could be worth it. Well, 6 million users of Oracle Cloud, that's a lot of follow on breaches. I bet a lot of hackers would pay some money, maybe not 200 million, but certainly pay some money for that access. Final thoughts. The cyber streets are not safe. The universities are getting schooled. Routers are getting taken over. Crypto exchanges are the playgrounds for hackers. ISPs are saying, wow. And cloud, it's raining data leaks, allegedly. Which of these breaches blew your mind or your router this week? Leave your thoughts and comments below. And hey, maybe remember that password 123 is not a personality.